Okay, so now that I've completed my primary color correction, I'm ready to move into some secondary color correction. And to start, I'm just gonna add another node. So I'm just gonna go add node, I'm gonna add a corrector node. I'm gonna drag that into my node tree and connect that. And what I wanna do first is I'm gonna go into the qualifier. And what I wanna do is select the highlight of the singer's face. Because what I wanna do is I wanna sort of blur that out to give it a nice soft glow. So I'm just gonna click and drag with the qualifier. And I'm also gonna turn on the highlight here so I can see what I'm selecting. And you can see that I've done a pretty good job of selecting the singer's face. But as always, I'm gonna need to make some fine adjustments down here in the qualifier controls. And basically what I wanna do is just have the highlights of the singer's face selected. Okay, and that looks pretty good for this example. And I'm gonna turn the highlight off. And now I'm just gonna blur out the area that I selected with the qualifier. So I'm gonna bring that up. And that looks pretty good. And if I sort of zoom in on the image, and do a before and after. You can see that it's a subtle effect again, but it does add just a little bit more glow and softness to her face and really helps to replicate that kind of 1940s glamour look that we're going for. One thing I do notice though is over here on the earring, I've managed to select and soften some of the highlights. So if I go back here um, into my qualifier and I turn the highlights back on, you'll see that there are areas of the earring that I've selected that I'm softening. And I actually don't want to do that. I want the earring to remain nice and sharp. So to correct for that, what I'm going to do is go and add in a power window. And I'm going to add in a rectangular power window. And I'm going to invert the power window. So it's subtracting what I have it over. And I can adjust the rectangle up here in my viewer, but I can also change it down here in the panel with these transform controls. So I'm just going to scale it down so it's a little bit closer in size to the earring. I'm just going to sort of drag it into position and just do some fine tuning here. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to turn off the highlight. And on the PC, you can also turn off the highlight using Shift H. So that's the hotkey for that. I just, a lot of times, will go to the panel so you can see what I'm doing instead of using a hotkey on my keyboard. Um, so visually, you can get a sense of you know what options I'm turning on and off. And with my power window in place, I've successfully removed the extra softening that was going on to the earring. But again, since we're working with video, while this power window is in place for this single frame, it's not actually gonna stay in place for our entire clip because as our singer moves, the earring goes in and out of the power window. So to correct for that, we're gonna use DaVinci Resolve's tracker. And I'm just gonna go into the tracker panel here. And I'm just gonna track forward and that's going to sort of connect that power window to the earring and allow the power window to stay with the earring during the entire shot. And once that's done, we'll see if we sort of scrub back through our clip that the power window has in fact connected to the earring and now we don't have to worry about softening the highlights on the earring. So the next thing I want to do is I want to resize my image. But I want three different image sizes for my three different clips. However, because of how DaVinci Resolve works, right now all three of these clips are connected to each other. So any change I make to any of these clips will ripple across to the other clips and those adjustments will be made universally. And I can see that visually because up here I have a red arrow that denotes that these clips are all connected to each other. So to show you what would happen if I were to try to resize just this end clip, I go into my resizing pane, and then if I zoom out of the image, if I go back to either one of these clips, you'll see I've also adjusted the sizing on those clips. So what I'm going to need to do to be able to resize all three of these clips individually is to create a new remote version for each of the clips. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do in the next tutorial.